Hello there and welcome to Exam AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 34, entitled Azure MFA and Conditional Access. My name is Tim Warner. Today's objective in the AZ, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain, starts with the functional group Describe Identity, Governance, Privacy, and Compliance features, drills into Describe Core Azure Identity Services, and specifically today's skill is Describe the Functionality and Usage of Azure MFA and Conditional Access. As always, you can download or just view the table of contents online by pointing your browser to timw.info forward slash az900sg. Now, what is MFA or multi-factor authentication? Well, hopefully you've been following this study guide sequentially so you know what authentication is. It's identity verification. And in authentication, the normal pattern is you provide a username as well as a password. A password is an authentication factor that you know. Either you know the correct password or you don't. With multi-factor authentication, sometimes called two-step verification, here we've got an additional second authentication factor that represents something you have. That something you have is in all likelihood a mobile phone that can receive SMS text messages, or maybe you have an authenticator app like Microsoft Authenticator or Authy or Google Authenticator installed, and you can retrieve a one-time passcode from that device. Biometric authentication represents a factor you are. This is pretty common nowadays. If you have a fairly recent computer running Windows 10, you may be using Windows Hello, which is a facial recognition process for unlocking your system and doing authentication. My home system is an Apple iMac, and I can unlock my computer using my Apple Watch. That's not exactly biometric, that's more of an MFA, but I can unlock my iDevices using my thumbprint. Certainly a fingerprint is an example of something that you are. You see what I mean? All of this is to protect your credential because your password may or may not be very secure. And in the event that a bad actor does compromise your password, they may know your sign-in. If they know your sign-in and your password, you're hosed and your business could potentially be on the hook for a big loss. Multi-factor, is a second safety catch to make sure that sign-in attempts are from you, the authorized party. Azure MFA is a cloud-hosted multi-factor authentication system that works against Azure Active Directory. Again, assuming that you've been following the videos in my study guide sequentially, we've already covered the basics of Azure AD, and really this lesson bookends upon the previous one. You've got, as an Azure MFA Global Administrator, some options to give your users on how they do their second step verification. You might go with a short message service or SMS text message to their device, in which case after they authenticate with their first factor, their password, they are prompted to enter a code from their messages app on their phone. Another option is just a six, seven, or maybe longer string of digits that cycled every 30 seconds, a one-time passcode, and you can or your users can configure a mobile application. Microsoft Authenticator is the name of Microsoft's own second factor authentication app, but it's not the only one. And if you decide that you want your users or if you're going to use this method, you actually can work with, believe it or not, Google Authenticator or Authy or any other MFA app. You can configure it to work with Azure. The only option with Azure MFA that does require you to have Microsoft Authenticator, which is available by the way for both iOS and Android, is the push option, the passwordless option, which I tend to like a lot. If for no other reason, it's convenient. As you can see on the right side of the slide, the user sees a new sign-in request push notification on their device. I actually can get those on my Apple Watch. And the idea here is if you are in fact attempting a sign-in, you will approve it. But if you're not initiating a sign-in and you see a message like this, you better notify your support desk immediately because your password has been compromised. This is the crux of multi-factor authentication in information security. The Microsoft official way, for lack of a better term, for administrators to enroll their users, and when I say their users, I'm talking about Azure Active Directory users, into Azure MFA is using a product called Azure AD Conditional Access, which does require Azure AD Premium P1 or P2 licensing. Here's the situation. A conditional access policy involves one or more signals. Who is the user, number one? Which part of the world are they attempting an authentication to one of your cloud apps from? What kind of device or user agent are they on? Are they on Windows, Mac OS? 
Are they on a desktop operating system or a mobile operating system? Which of your cloud apps are they attempting to access? And does Azure Active Directory see any real-time risk associated with that sign-in attempt? Every single access attempt to your cloud apps will be screened against a conditional access policy, and the user will either be granted or denied access to your cloud applications and associated Azure data. Stated simply, Azure AD conditional access policy is a way for administrators to completely shape or sculpt the authentication context to protect your Azure AD-backed applications. Alrighty then, I'm going to illustrate for you now the basics of Azure multi-factor authentication. Let me open in the Azure portal a connection to my Azure Active Directory tenant, and I'm going to tread lightly here. I, again, I always remind myself that AZ900 is not intended strictly for existing IT professionals, so I need to calibrate the depth of my demo. Sorry about that editorialization. Let's go to our users list in Azure Active Directory, and we can click out, and I say we can click out. If you're a global administrator, Administrator, you can click out here to multi-factor authentication and make sure that we're signing in with an account with global administrator privilege. And I'm going to click on over here to service settings. And once that page loads, I'll scroll down to the bottom and I'll zoom in so you can see it better. These verification options is where you as an Azure MFA administrator can determine the options that your Azure AD users can use when they enroll in Azure MFA. Depending on your location and subscription, you may or may not have call to phone is an option. That's literally where Azure does a robocall, a voice call, and the user can press a key on their dial pad to acknowledge that it is a legitimate sign-in. Text message is just a straight-up SMS text message. Charges would apply to that depending on how your mobile phone is set up. Notification through mobile app is a push notification, and verification code for mobile app or hardware token is that six, seven, or eight-digit sequence that changes every 30 seconds. And lastly, as an administrator, you can use this Remember Multi-Factor Authentication to give your users some convenience. One to 60 days, you can allow them to cache their MFA challenge in their browser so they don't have to complete it every time. If your security people raise a fuss and say, no, we want to make sure our users do an MFA every single time they sign in, note the red text here. Basically, Microsoft is saying, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> so to unroll our users, we're going to use a conditional access policy, and we're going to affect, in this example, one of my fictional Azure AD users named Melissa Gunn. Right now, she's just a straight-up member of this directory, but she currently is not signed up or enrolled in Azure MFA. Let me search for, actually, I don't even have to search for it because it's in my recent services list, Azure AD conditional access. And through the magic of video editing, I already have the policy created, and it's outside our scope to get into the deep end of the proverbial pool with this. But suffice it to say, as you can see, I've created a policy called Melissa Gone MFA policy. Now, of course, in your environment, you'll be using groups, not individual users. In this example, just for the purpose of this demo, I scoped this policy. As you can see under assignments, you scope the policy to Azure Active Directory users and groups. I included only Melissa Gone, as you can see here. Conditional access, as I showed you in the slide, has a number of potential conditions that you can add in, in terms of locations in the world where the user's connecting from, what kind of operating system they're using, and you can deny authentication from regions and devices that are outside your organizational policies. But ultimately, we come down to access control, and in the grant field, we either grant or block access, and then here's the magic. I ticked the box for require multi-factor authentication. This is going to ensure that the next time Melissa tries to sign into a cloud app, she's going to be forced to enroll in MFA, or if she's already enrolled in Azure MFA, she'll have to complete a challenge. To test this, let me open up a new and private window, and I'm going to instruct Melissa to go to myapps.microsoft.com. That's a well-known DNS name that points to what's called the Application Access Panel. It's a single sign-on portal. So we'll go myapps.microsoft.com. We'll provide Melissa's Azure AD sign-in name, click Next. 
I recently added some branding to my Azure Active Directory tenant, and so that's why you see all of the differences here. I'll provide a password for her, or should I say I'll provide her password, and then the conditional access policy kicks in here. More information is required. Your organization needs more info to keep your account secure. So we'll click next. And now the user's brought to the additional security verification page and she can choose either authentication phone or mobile app. If she goes the mobile app route and clicks set up, she'll open the app on her phone enable the camera. Let me just click it here. I'll show you set up. And with her mobile app and her camera, she'll take a picture of this quick response or QR code. And it's as simple as that to add Azure MFA as a new account in the user's mobile application. I'm going to need to redo that sign in because I tried to bail out of that enrollment process. So let's come back here and again, more information required. And let's say that Melissa is going to use her authentication phone to do a code by text message. She feels that that's the easiest way for her to go here. Again, the options that the user has depend upon what the Azure MFA administrator is allowing. We'll click next. She'll receive that code in her messages app on her phone. She'll put it in, hit verify. Verification is successful, so we'll click done. Do we want to stay signed in? I'll say yes. And this is the application access panel. She hasn't been given access to any cloud apps. That's why her apps list is empty. Now, at any time, the user can come back here and update their MFA settings. They can open up the user menu, go to profile, and then under additional security verification, as you see here, the user can change his or her preferred option, again, depending upon what the service administrator has set up and if they have a new way that they want to go, that is, in this case, to use an authenticator app or token, they can set that up and then, again, choose their preferred option from the list. There you have it. For learning resources, as usual, if you want to learn the basics of Azure MFA, go to the docs. Short link is timw.info forward slash cap01. For more info on conditional access policies, the short link is timw.info cap2. And if you want more information on passwordless sign-in, particularly some really interesting work being done in terms of using, say, biometrics to authenticate into Azure AD, go to timw.info forward slash cap3. That's C-A-P-3. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me as usual. In the next episode, we're going to stay with our theme of security. This time, we're going to cover Azure Role-Based Access Control, or RBAC for short. Please like and subscribe. You know the drill with YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. All of my full-length courses are in the Pluralsight Library, some of which are free due to Pluralsight's partnership with Microsoft. You can look at my author page at timw.info forward slash ps. And lastly, my personal website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. Happy studying. I'll see you in the next episode.